Welcome back. I decided to make a video uh, from this uh, Mazda 6 engine. It's a 2.2. Uh, I want to show all the engine management sensors that I can reach so that I can explain, show you the, where they are situated, where they are located, and also where I can, um, I'll be able to explain how they work. So I want to start with this one here. This one is our crankshaft sensor. As you can see, this is the pulley, right? That's the crankshaft pulley. Um, so this one is our crankshaft sensor. And when I'm looking at it, um, uh, it's actually a three-wire sensor okay it is a three-wire sensor I want to believe one is a power one is a ground and the other one is a signal and so it, it is not an inductive sensor possibly a whole whole type sensor okay so what does it do this sensor is responsible for uh, determining TDC so as you can see the wheels look on the wheel the teeth are dotted around the same but when we come this side you can see that there's a massive gap so that's what determines our TDC and this sensor here is this is the one that reports to the ECU about TDC so um, the other thing that it does it is responsible for engine speed so when you go on live data an engine sometimes use this sensor when an engine is not starting and you have a crank but no start um, I would use this sensor straight away go on live data check your engine speed crank the engine if you find that you have zero revs all right per minute then this is the this is the place to come you can you might not choose to come here maybe this when it, when the engine is in the in the vehicle this may not be easily accessible go to the engine ecu and you'll be able to get these wires and then you can you can test it for there for power ground and then signal all right so two things here engine speed and also it determines TDC so that's the crankshaft sensor then I'm right here at the top and right here on the right side I'm looking from the front of the engine here right so right here at the top here I have a sensor and it is a three pin sensor again and it's a camshaft sensor. I want to believe that on my camshaft side. So the camshaft sensor as well, um, it takes note of the speed of the camshaft, but it mainly, it is there to determine which cylinder is on TDC, which cylinder is on TDC. So that helps with the firing order remember these injectors here they have to fire in a certain order the drone just fire one two three four you know the engine will not be balanced so they would fire one three four two so once uh the the ecu knows you know which that our number one is on tdc then it will know what follows it will just follow um that firing order and then here is the other sensor it is on the fuel rail if if you can check that so this sensor here is called a fuel pressure sensor it measures the pressure that is in the common rail so here we go um for the engine to be able to start I'll give you just a, a, a rough uh, figure here you are looking at a pressure of roughly 200 bar of pressure you know some will be 250 200 bar of pressure then the engine you know can start if everything else is fine 
if the ECU does not see that pressure, it will shut down everything and the engine will not start. So this sensor here is responsible for um, reporting to the ECU, to the engine management system, the pressure that is in the common rail. Remember, all these four injectors, all these injectors should be subjected to the same pressure at every time every stage every cycle of this of the engine so what are the three pins power ground and signal okay um if i can just give you a tip here something that i've learned over the years um, these sensors sometimes can be difficult to especially if we have no start uh, i've seen people tempted to take these sensors out i'll, I'll try another one and see don't if you have a good scan tool uh, and the scan tool with the ignition key on, if your scan tool can show you uh, a 0.5 of a volt, okay, 0 0.5 of a volt, if it can show you that, mainly you, I would go elsewhere because it shows that this sensor is working fine, the power is okay, the ground is fine, the signal wire is working okay. So once you get a 0.5 of a volt, go elsewhere, leave this sensor alone. Usually they don't give problems. These sensors, they don't give problems usually. Okay, so that's our fuel pressure sensor. So what I've done, I've come to the back of the engine here. Okay, I've come to the back of the engine. This one is fuel pressure regulator you can see that it's on the on the rail right and then you see this valve here this is very very important right i'll 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 talk about it so what it does uh most of the fuel pressure regulators they are electronic but this one is a mechanical one it is not electronic so the way it works inside there is a valve which is spring loaded okay so when the pressure in here is is above the pressure of the spring so the pressure will push the needle from its seat and then the excess excess pressure will flow out okay it will flow out into this and then back into the pump again let's follow that you know that's it in here out okay and then that's it here in there down there and we follow that right into the into the high pressure pump this is our that's our high pressure pump this one here we'll talk about these two sensors as well so please remember what i'm saying here this is mechanical okay being mechanical i have seen these spring the spring inside break and when that spring is broken now it means that this rail is the fuel is being delivered to this rail this rail now is not able to hold, remember I said a minimum of 200 bar of pressure in order to start the engine. Now this rail is unable to hold that because the needle is now broken. So what happens, fuel just comes in immediately, it's sent back again to the, to the pump. So you have now a low, so this sensor at the back, the fuel pressure will record a low fuel pressure problem. And normally what, what, we, what I've seen people do, then they go to the fuel pressure sensor and, and think that that's the one that is a problem. And then they, they take it out and fit another one and still you have the same problem. So what I would advise you to do in that situation, when you have a no start, come to this pipe here. Just pinch that pipe here. Okay? You can do it with... Um, just anything you know uh, a clamp you know that can just hold so that there is no fuel that will pass you'll find that if this needle here is no longer spring loaded you will realize that 
the engine will start okay so when the engine starts then all you need to do is just to take out the fuel rail and then go and buy another one maybe from the junkyard or you know wherever you can get another one and replace it happy enough if you can find the spring and the valve that would be even better you can change that so that's about fuel and here we have we have a map sensor manifold absolute pressure sensor we have a map sensor here okay so that checks the pressure that is in the intake system all right so it's a three wire uh, sensor it's a pressure sensor so you have a power ground and you do have a signal wire it is important to know which one is a power which one is ground and which one is signal um, i'll go into into details uh, with these sensors you know uh, later on but just now i just want to introduce them and and show you uh, what they do so here this is the turbo uh turbo charger actuator okay so what it does is it's the one that moves the veins opens and closes the veins according to the load you know according to the demands of the of the engine so it there is a vacuum here and then we have this that three wire sensor as well so you've got the electric electric side and then you've got the, the vacuum as well so that's the actuator rod there please don't tamper with it do not loosen that adjustment screw um, if you are not experienced with the how a table charger works um, this one here what I disconnected here was the table actuator solenoid that's what I disconnected from from this one here and what's our next sensor uh, well well I've got an EGR, EGR valve here there is the electrics connected this side okay that's so when the engine is in the in the vehicle that will be the front just behind the old the alternator so that's the EGR valve okay that's the EGR valve there you can see this is this is the wee valve it opens and closes so these are the sensors um, some of the sensors they're not all the sensors but these are some of the sensors that I thought you know what uh, let me just identify them and then of course these are injectors identify them and um, you know so that when we talk about them we can talk about them now in detail and really go into how we test them and um, using an oscilloscope or just using a multimeter uh, in this case a, vol a voltmeter so but for now I just wanted to show where you find them and what they are what they are called okay um, thanks for taking your time you know to watch these videos please remember to subscribe and also click that notification bell so that you don't miss any videos from me this is an scv valve uh, suction control valve the purpose of a suction control valve in this case is to regulate the amount of fuel that is going to the rail to try as much as possible to just meter enough uh, is per demand okay so that's what it does you'll notice with some systems you'll have a suction control valve like this on the pump and you will have as well another one uh, as a fuel pressure regulator on on the on the rail so sometimes you can have two mercedes would do that uh, i'll delve into that at some stage later on uh, so this one here it's just a simple temperature sensor it's it's a fuel you know temperature sensor 
So by this, I think I have managed to uh, speak about all the sensors, all the engine management sensors um, that are on this Mazda, uh, including the the boost pressure sensor that I spoke about, the crankshaft sensor, um, the what was the other one I show you? I showed you as well the the EGR valve um, with five pins. I may maybe need to explain a little bit on that one as well. So here I have a throttle body. Mind you, this is a diesel and a throttle body works differently on a diesel engine than it does on a petrol engine. We know that um, that, f that butterfly there will determine the amount of fuel that goes in an engine if it is a petrol engine, but in this case, this is diesel it doesn't um, it is used to shut the engine down uh, it is closed whenever you turn the ignition key off um, and the air does not go in so you shut the engine down that way because with a diesel you s the and the engine sucks in air and then the fuel is added later on so this throttle body here is used for different reasons some of the systems may use will use it for um, uh, DPF regeneration uh, it can also be used uh, you know for the what is this it can be used for for the EGR valve you know at low speeds it can actually be used so that the EGR valve would work efficiently so shutting down EGR valve and also for, for regeneration purposes so that the temperatures rise um, and then the, the DPF can start to regenerate. You know, different manufacturers will, will, will use it differently. But just to give you a heads up on that, okay, we will be doing tests on, on, on the individual um, sensors and so that at least, you know, we get to understand how they work just beyond uh, what I've just given you like this overview okay I promise to come back on the EGR valve so if you notice we've got five pins in there so what do they do uh, one of them is a ground the other one is a power that's for the motor you know it is only for the motor the power and the ground for the motor Okay, then we've got three left. Uh, with old systems, you'll find that there will be a potentiometer. There's a resistor, but the newer systems don't work like that. There are no moving parts at all. So one is a power. It could be a five volt. Um, the first power that I talked about for the motor is a 12 volt power. This one would be a five volt reference, and one would, the other pin would be a ground. And the other one will be the signal so you are expecting to have two powers okay one 12 volt one 5 volt two grounds one for the motor and one for the potentiometer so I thought I should maybe add that 